AFCON 2023 and Ivory Coast have knocked out the champion Senegal. I do not know what has just happened. Guys on TikTok Live were just laughing at me because I predicted Senegal to win the tournament, to win the entire thing. <laughs> My bracket is busted in all ways. So far out of six, I've gotten three right, but I've gotten three of the worst ones. Like the person I predicted to win the tournament is out. You don't understand. Ivory Coast had no business in the round of 16, but they fired their coach. They got a new coach. Or rather, they asked the interim coach. Done a good job. Fire, I think his name is. They tried getting have a renowned loan, but that didn't work out. This guy has just galvanized the team. Him starting Max Gradel to me, I was like, ah, what is this? I don't understand what's happening. And then, they just came together. They played with the crowd. They were solid. They were passing from the back. They were, the de defensive transition was the one thing they needed to work on. Because once they lose the ball, they were not compact. Within a few days, this guy has changed so much. Just taking it down to the basics. Uh, Casey did not start the game. Frank Casey did not start the game. He ended up winning the game, the winning penalty. But that was key because if you play Sangare, Casey, and Fofana, and you're going into extra time, it means you're going into extra time without one of your leaders, right? And it was a big gamble, but it worked out in the end because he removed Fofana, which I, I, I was like, wow, that's a big one. But Fofana has played every game, every minute of every game. So it kind of made sense. Another person who needs to get a lot of credit is Pepe. Pepe, Pepe was immense in this game. Pepe came and changed the game. His runs, the pass from Ndika, I remember, like the crossfield ball, and then him just the one-time shot, and like he was, he really changed the game. He's, there's one thing Pepe is doing that he never did at Arsenal, which is just frustrating to watch. He's actually playing within himself, and he gets the ball one touch and he's gone. He's moving, he's running into space. Like, he is doing everything we wanted him to do at Arsenal. <laughs> but fair, fair to him. He was actually really good. Um, Senegal said this game very well. Scored within the first four minutes of the game. Again, Serge Ori. I don't understand what he was doing. Money, it's a throw-in. Money gets the ball. And then it's like Ori is turning around to tell uh, Diakate, yo, look at that guy. And the moment he turns his head, Money does the over, over the ball, like <laughs> over the ball, whatever, and then moves to his right side. That time, um, Ori is confused. He's like, oh, what's happening? Mane goes to the byline and just quick cross straight to Diallo who puts the ball in the back of the net. No nonsense. One nil. And you're like, yo, yo, yo. It was ominous at that point. I was like, these guys are done for. Like, how are they going to come back from this? But, uh, fair play. Fair play to send to Ivory Coast. Actually, there was a point where Mane should have, Mane should have received a red card. Again, Daylight robbery. Where are the police? We need the police here. This is the first game I've seen AFCON. The referees have made a bad decision. Fast, fast. We need the police. But, to be fair. <laughs> uh, no, not actually to be fair. He deserved to be. It was a red card. He deserved to be go, to be gone. They didn't even go to VR to check it again. Like, that on the cops needs to be called on that. What was that? VR, we need answers. This is the first bad decision you've made in this AFCON. We need answers. Um, also, shout out to the fourth official. The She's the referee from Algeria, I believe it is. I'm forgetting her name. What was her name? Barbu, Barbu someone. Uh, let me just search that quickly. She was very, very, like, you, you are not going to tell her anything. You're not, you're not going to push her around. She was, like, very dis definitive. Fourth official, but she was making her presence felt because... Everyone was was almost threatening to get to get out of control, especially on that Pepe penalty. Pepe came on, he won an amazing penalty. He again crossfield ball that was always on to Pepe. That's how they got back into the game, controlled it, and then just hit it past Mendy, and Mendy just passed with him. And then the ref comes and gives a yellow card. So at first we thought he gave it to Pepe for diving, but he had actually given it to Kwame, if I'm not wrong, uh, for just complaining, right? Um. I need to get this referee's name. Yeah. He gave it to, to Bushra Karbubi. She was very definitive. She's like, yo, you guys are not going to push me around in this touchline. And I do not want to see any violence. Like, she was like, yo, I'm setting, this is the law. I don't need to be seen. I don't need to be part of, of this game, right? Like, I need to be there to enforce the law, but I don't need to be seen. But if you guys mess up, and I have to set, lay down the law. 
I feel like she was more she had more of control and more of a presence as the fourth official than the actual referee on the field. Because the referee on the field was just stone faced. It's like yellow card, yellow card. Like it was just giving yellow cards. Um yeah, so she managed to calm things down on the touchline and like, yo guys, calm down, relax, relax, relax. So finally went to VR, clear penalty, and Casey did not mean his free kick, uh, his penalty, straight to the corner. Mendy has this tendency of going one side and then going the other. But the way he does it, he really messes, like he really his knee goes in like this. And every time you're like, dude, you're going to do your ACL or um because he's doing it this way, you're going to do an MCL, medial. MCL is on the inside. Um, PCL is on the back. ACL is literally like towards the front, right? So that's those are the four parts of your knee. ACL, PCL, MCL, LCL. Lateral, medial, posterior, anterior. Anyway, that's all the point. The point is, um, so yeah, scores the penalty, 10 minutes to go, uh, at this point, Cote d'Ivoire have are on the upper hand, and actually, Senegal did well to kind of just just cool down everything, calm the crowd, and go into extra time. And extra time, they started off like well, they were more forceful, but there were not many chances really until we actually got to the penalties. And then Niakate, Niakate, everyone scored the penalty until Niakate stepped up and missed his off the post. And at that point, you just saw and you're like, nah, like this this one is gone, this one is gone. And as yeah, Frank Casey stood up. Slaughter the penalty right above Mindy's head and Ivory Coast are through to the round of eight, the quarterfinal stage. I don't know how, I don't know where, but the only positive I'd say is when the tournament stays in the tournament, when the host stays in the tournament, the tournament is better. So we will take that. We will take it. Lupo, I... Ah, I can't even believe it. I can't believe your team is still here. I am actually in shock. And then lastly, to everyone on TikTok Live, you guys were amazing. Like, we had 10,000 people on TikTok Live for this entire game. Um, and also get 10,000 likes. So, to everyone on the live, Sami, you're always there, always giving me banter. I love it. Keep coming back. You guys are just the best. Kinan, the Shabana boy, you are. You guys just keep coming, keep coming. We go again. We'll do Morocco versus Bafana Bafana tomorrow on TikTok Live. Peace!